So uh, my talk is called An American in Singapore, but it's really kind of a mix of Southeast Asia and Australia. Uh, has anyone been to Singapore before? Okay, cool. Uh, please like, feel free to you know, call me out on anything you feel I'm wrong on. Uh, some of the stuff is opinion uh, from my time there. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. I do have some facts and stuff that are not opinion. That's me. Uh, right now I'm a, a freelancer. I'm living in Atlanta. And uh, I really love what I do. And that's building websites. And I hope that everyone here loves what they do. So first of all, I want to say thanks for letting me talk. Uh, I know I'm not from here. I kind of like came out of the blue and just said I'd like to give a talk. And everyone here has been really receptive. So thanks, guys. Yay. Yay. Uh, this is kind of a give and take talk. So if you have questions about anything that I talk about or anything about Singapore that you feel is important, feel free to ask. So uh, what exactly is Singapore? Uh, well, I got some quick statistics for you. Uh, there's about 5.26 million people on this tiny island in Southeast Asia. It's about a degree off the equator. Uh, so there's a it's a pretty rich population at 55,000 GDP per capita, US per comparison to 53. 17% uh, of households have over a million dollars. This is incredible. Um, I would go to work and I'd see a Ferrari every day. And it's like, okay, yeah, Ferrari, that's like 120, I don't know, $200,000 car. But in Singapore, cars have like a tax of 200%. So that's actually like a $600,000 car on top of a $100,000 uh, COE that you have to purchase. So there's a lot of money here. Uh, and it kind of shows up in a lot of the uh, industry there. So for reference, this little squiggly outline is the island of Singapore uh, over Portland. <laughs> um, and there's like 5 million people inside of that. Uh, Portland has a population of 600,000, I think. Is it most of it a small? Uh, Singapore? Yeah. It's all built up. Oh, yeah. So uh, this bottom portion, there's a lot of reclaimed land here. Um, and they've built some incredible buildings here, like Marina Bay Sands. Uh, it's built on reclaimed land. Uh, the majority of the country is a jungle. Um, and you'll occasionally be driving, and it'll just be like trees everywhere. Um, but uh, up here, and kind of this north middle portion, there is like, I guess, some area that could be considered to be a swamp. It's like a, a reserve, kind of. So there's like a, a water reservoir there and a nature walk. So here's like a, kind of what Singapore looks like in certain places. Uh, these are what's called shop houses. And these are kind of like old colonial buildings built by Great Britain um, and Singaporeans a long time ago. Uh, a lot of these have been bulldozed to make way for these huge HDBs, which are uh, public housing. Uh, the majority of citizens live in these HDBs. Uh, one of these shop houses uh, in a central business area can cost upwards of like $10 million, depending on where you buy. Um, so Singapore was originally uh, a British colony, and there's a lot of British influence still there. Well, it's kind of interesting to, be see, to see like Chinese buildings next to Indian buildings next to these giant British buildings. It's kind of like what Chinatown looks like at night. Uh, so it's a very vibrant, kind of exciting culture. A lot of people will stay out very late. There's a lot of awesome architecture here. Uh, this photo doesn't quite show it, but this building just has all these terraces with uh, plants growing on them. This is a 100% green building, is what I've been told. Yeah. You said the majority of people live in public housing. Is this like it is in the US or Britain where it's lower, lower income housing? No, everyone. Uh, so all types of people from different walks of life. So uh, the public housing there isn't all like really crappy or mediocre, it's a range. Uh, I don't know if I have a photo of it, but they recently built one public housing system that's seven large buildings, and uh, they're basically these enormous skyscrapers, and units in there can sell for three hundred to $400,000 after subsidies. Uh, so the government subsidizes a lot of the housing. Uh, so you'll see people that make very little live in these HDBs, and people that make a lot. 
I think upwards of like 80% uh, of the population who's native to Singapore will live in the HPC. Yeah? Is that because of the high tax on the wealthiest uh, Singapore actually has uh, one of the, the lowest tax rates in the whole world. So um, they have a progressive tax system. Um, and th There's a caveat to this. Uh, so they have a progressive tax system. Uh, so while I was there, I made about $60,000. Um, and only paid five hundred dollars in taxes, oh. which <laughs> is pretty awesome. Um, yeah. um, if you're a citizen, there's this mandatory uh, insurance program slash retirement fund that you have to invest in. That's like twenty percent of your uh, monthly pay, but you know you do get some of that money back when you retire. And of course, the age goes up, so that's like a source of discontent. Uh, so this is like uh, the financial district at night. Um, so a lot of Singapore will switch between uh, this very dense, very urban setting to a uh, more residential one. Uh, so why go? Well, uh, one of the best advantages is that you can travel over all of Southeast Asia. Uh, there's so much in such a little place. Uh, like if you want to take a trip to Thailand, uh, to Vietnam, to Bali, to Indonesia, to Malaysia, these are like an hour, two hour flights. You can do that on a weekend. It's, it's pretty incredible. And the culture there in these regions is just uh, nothing that I've seen before. I mean, we're talking buildings that were built in 900 AD and older. Uh, so just really cool opportunities. So here's Bali. Uh, this is a temple, a Buddhist temple actually. Um, and it's, this is, um, this is pretty representative of the whole island. You'll find things like this. Uh, so you'll also work with a diverse team of people from all over the world. Um, on the project I worked on, there I counted up. There are people from uh, 18 different countries of all sorts of ethnicities, uh, all sorts of different backgrounds. And it gave me a chance to meet with people and do things that I would have never have done before. There's also a lot of really interesting work, depending upon what you find interesting. Uh, so there's a lot of startups there. The country is really investing in the startup scene. In fact, they're giving a lot of money to people that start up a business in Singapore. Uh, there's some unique Southeast Asia opportunities. Uh, I got a chance to work with the government on a project that uh, affected a lot of people who live in Singapore. And I probably wouldn't have had that opportunity in the US. Uh, there are things like the US Social Services Group that is forming here. But the Singaporean government is very active in the lives of its uh, citizens. So it can be a good or a bad thing, depending on you know, who you are. But uh, there's a lot of interesting opportunities. Uh, banking is huge in Singapore. Uh, there's a lot of interesting work going on there. Uh, in fact, some of the largest uh, Haskell meetups are in Singapore, which I thought was really interesting. It has a really stable economy. Uh, they've had year-over-year uh, -year GDP uh, growth increases. Um, a lot of people there have made a lot of money over a long time. Uh, and when you go there, it's, it's truly like a first world nation. Uh, in some, some ways, in many ways, better than the U.S. Can I, yeah. can I ask a question there? Like, uh, what is the basis of the economy? What, what, what is it built on? Sure, so a lot of the economy is built on shipping. So uh, the whole southern side of Singapore is basically a giant uh, collection of ports. Uh, so they, in addition to shipping, uh, a lot of oil goes through Singapore. And finally, uh, a lot of Western businesses like to do business out of Singapore for the whole Southeast Asia and sometimes the whole Asia region uh, because of how safe the area and the economy is. Um, and you kind of see this uh, in that 23% of the population is expatriate. Uh, so there's a large foreign population in the country. So Singapore is one of the safest nations in the whole world. Um, the example I give is, I went to a gas station at, I don't know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. It was still packed and crowded. I went to an ATM and withdrew $5,000 to pay off my, uh, my security deposit, my first month's rent and everything. And no one looked at me, no one thought that was a weird thing to do. Um, and I felt totally safe and fine doing that. 
It has one of the lowest murder rates in the world. Uh, it's just incredible. Uh, basically, no matter who you are, you can pretty much feel safe walking around there. So why not go? Uh, it's really expensive, guys. Uh, this is a bottle of St. Bernardus. This was uh, $11 um, in a, at a grocery store. Um, that's uh, an example of a cheaper beer. Uh, housing is really expensive there if you're an expat. Um, people will routinely pay about 2,400 US dollars a month. Um, so it's about San Francisco level prices. Uh, that's for a very small apartment. Um, it's really hot, uh, especially compared to here. Uh, the, the temperature ranges from about uh, 77 at the very lowest up to 94 at the hottest all year long. And uh, that's with a humidity of 60 to 80%. So that's us at Christmas. Uh, I mean, we're just out there in regular shorts and shirts. So there's definitely going to be some cultural friction um, and some social norms that you won't be used to uh, just because it's a new area, new people. And the unique challenge in Singapore is that it's not just one homogenous culture. It's this huge melting pot of people from all sorts of different religious backgrounds. You'll see, like, uh, a mosque next to uh, a temple, next to a church, next to um, basically any religion. Uh, so it, it's a really interesting place. Um, so we went to Korea while we were there as well. And uh, so just whenever you travel to, you'll be, you'll encounter languages that you don't know, you'll encounter signs, and it'll be really hard to get around. But I mean, there's some rewarding experiences from that too. Uh, there's a lot less opportunity than there is in the U.S., especially in software. So um, depending on the fields that you're interested in, you won't really be able to find the type of work that maybe you enjoy. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind before you go. There's a low number of Western cultural events, so we miss Thanksgiving and Fourth of July and things like that. We kind of recreated it around. But there are things to make up for that. Um, also, they have very different freedoms. And they really have a lack of free press. Uh, I think this has been highlighted uh, recently with uh, the Prime Minister of Singapore's Sudoku puzzle. In the Hacker News thread, it's all about like press suppression there. Uh, that's a real thing. And uh, it's something to keep in mind before you go. So uh, how do you contribute to development in Singapore? Well, there's like a whole bunch of groups out there that kind of help uh, people who are looking to do a startup or people who are looking to do uh, work with the startup. Uh, here's a few. There's a lot of a lot of others too. Uh, I really recommend Meetup, just like here in the U.S. The Ruby user group there is awesome. Uh, it's about a third, two thirds of this size of this one, uh, despite the the small country. And uh, Facebook groups actually are really used a lot for technical meetups, which was kind of interesting to me. Um, I kind of recommend working with a consultancy. These are two that I know of that are pretty good there. Uh, I worked with Neo while I was there. Um, what's nice about a consultancy is that you get a group of people that are from all over the world and they're not necessarily tied to like one specific project. Oh yeah, a lot of bikes. So if you want to do hardcore financial work. Uh, so uh, here's some recommendations for living there. Uh, try and live like a local and be regular places. Um, I even recommend this here as well. Uh, this is a hawker center. So a lot of people will go here and just eat for lunch. This usually has the food for three dollars. Really cheap, fast, good. Get to meet with a lot of people because it's like a family style city. Uh, definitely understand local laws, especially in Singapore. They're really strict about it. Um, so just make sure you read up on it before you go. Find a good housing agent. This is really important. Uh, your housing agent basically acts as your intermediary between you and a landlord. And um, there's this principle known as Kai Su, which basically means hold on to everything as much as you can. And uh, what that means is that once you give someone something, they don't want to necessarily give it back. So a housing agent will be your person that kind of helps you make sure that you know things happen 
for you, not for your landlord. I really recommend recording anything uh, that you kind of think about when you go to a new place, because uh, you're in a different frame of mind and kind of a different place in your life. And so use this as an opportunity to kind of evaluate you know, yourself and the things you believe. And also remember that you're the foreigner here. You're the person who's coming into their society. And uh, have about $10,000 when you get there. <laughs> um, or just have a company pay to move you. Uh, it's, it's really expensive. There's a lot of fees that you might not know about beforehand. So the world's a really big place. And uh, before I moved to Singapore, uh, I kind of thought that the development world was just in the US. I was really naive. Uh, there's tons of great things going on all over the world, not just in Singapore, but also in Europe and in India, all over. And I really recommend that you take a time and look at what else is out there. Uh, in particular, was uh, I went to Rails Camp in Australia, and it's basically this event where a whole bunch of people who are part of the Australian Ruby community get together for a weekend at a remote location, and they just kind of hack on like Ruby, they talk, they hang out. It's kind of like a big group hug, and I, I thought it was great. Uh, it gives you a chance to meet and interact with people who are big names in the community in ways that you never would before, especially since there's no internet, so that helps a lot. Uh, be passionate about what you do. If you're not doing something that you enjoy, I really recommend that you kind of consider changing what you do to something that you do enjoy. And uh, Singapore is really safe. I would love it if the US was just as safe. Uh, there's a lot of security there. I would love that if we could have that as well. And it's also super clean. Um, it, different places in the US have different experiences, but I'd like to see those things here as well. So thanks, guys.